Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a Hi, it's Jackie Cation, and you are listening to The Dork Forest. The website's JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com if you like a determiner. Let's do the credits. Patrick Brady's going to fix this audio and video. Vilmos works on JackieCation.com, and Mike Rickberg uh, sang the song with his wife, Sarah. He composed it, and he will sing his version of the Mexican hat dance at the end of this show. Thank you so much for listening to The Dork Forest. Here's a scoop. I'm doing stand-up online. A lot of Zoom shows will eventually go back on the road. Sign up for my email list. It's easy to get off. It's harder to get on than it is to get off. And no harm, no foul, if ever bored. JackieCation.com. Sign up for the email list. You'll find out about my weekly Zoom shows and stand-up on the road eventually. You may donate to the show if you would like. I would like. Sure, I would. There's PayPal, Jackie at JackieCation.com. And there is a PayPal button on both ZorkForest.com and JackieCation.com. And there's Venmo, if you like Venmo, Jackie-Cation, oddly enough. If you have listened to all of the shows, go to DorkForest.BandCamp.com, I think. The Dork Forest has a Bandcamp page. You can listen to a, but a lot of ones that are free from pre 2000 nine when i started pre-recording and uh then there's a live episodes that cost me a couple of bucks so i charge you a couple of bucks there's also some stand-up there's a story uh album that's very exciting there and um other than that i have a lot of merch in my garage feel free to order if you know anybody who doesn't have any cds or the dvd and uh you can follow me everywhere at jackie cation let's get into the show Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I'm in my uh, garage, and this time, it's got to be 10 years since Ollie Barter, since you've been on the show. Uh, Ollie Barter, that, yeah. game designer, toy designer or reviewer or reviewer for uh, sure? No, no. Reviewer for sure. Right. Uh, I sometimes like maybe consultant-ish, maybe, okay. kind of. not Dream job. Maybe that's a bit too much. Kind of. I don't know. But mostly reviewer. Mostly reviewer. Well, and collector. And, co- and collector for sure. Ollie Barter, you guys. And we're going to talk anime today. But let me tell you, first of all, it's at Cacophonous on Twitter and his YouTube page, which has a lot of toy reviews and, and, and action figure kind of information. and in Games as well. Yeah. yeah. C-A-C-O-P-H-A-N-U-S. And it'll be in the notes, obviously. But it's at Cacophonous on Twitter. And that's his YouTube page. And then he writes for Forbes, Hobby Link, and Mecha Damashi. Did I- yeah, that's fine. Not bad? Not great? Not perfect? Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Uh, it'll also Don't be in the, in the notes, you guys. That's right. Because he's in Tokyo. That's the exciting. Oh, yeah. That's very exciting. I hear your 7-Elevens are amazing. Yes, well, that's companies in general. I mean, all the companies, uh, convenience stores, oh, there you go. are amazing. There, so you've got like Family Mart, uh, you know, Seven Eleven, Lawson. I mean, they're all. It's like what? the entire nation would come to a grinding halt if there were no companies, basically. And what Everybody is the word you for everything? Company? How do you how do you spell? That? Yeah. So okay. So Japan. So Japanese does this a lot. So they kind of do these like they like to abbreviate words. Uh, a lot. So something like plastic model becomes plan model. Oh. And Gundam plastic model becomes Gunpla. Oh. So they go. Mm. All right. Yeah. I. See um, and so convenience store becomes combini. Com. So. All right. Co- combini. 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 Well, so combini. It's, yeah, combini. I, you know what? I I I'm old enough to remember before we called them bodegas. So it's all working out for me. We can just, I, yeah. I usually just call it a 7 Eleven or the, or the local liquor store where I'm going to get some beef jerky. And, uh, but I understand yeah. that your local like companies are, are really well done. Like it's not triangle sandwiches that are three days old. Well, I mean, the food is a bit sketchy, if I'm honest. Oh. Um, but the, the, the stuff that... I mean, it's not bad. But, I mean, the thing that's very interesting about company is that you can also uh, send your post there. You can pay your bills there. You can... Um, so, in Japan, they have lots of very kind of strict regulations on what you can and cannot throw away. So, if you have something like electrical goods, you have to get a special stamp. Yeah. 
which your your local prefecture or borough they they use that, and that's normally where you get them is from a combini. Okay. Um, you also have lots of um, you know everyday sort of stationary materials and all other stuff. So it's not just like a local corner shop liquor store with food. Right, it's got everything in it. Oh, fair enough. Um, that's why it's kind of called, called a convenience store because a lot of people work ridiculously long hours. So the the only time they get to do anything like pay their rent or you know is like at these places and they're open like twenty four hours. So oh, that makes sense too. Then okay, mm. well that was they're everywhere and that is the glimpse. That is the glimpse that we have gotten. But let's not take up valuable time talking about how great Japan is and the interesting. Uh, no, you can't. We'll have you back on because. Um, because I have tried to watch some anime, and I have watched some anime, and I'm reading more manga now than I've ever read, which means two, mm. two manga. Anyway, but uh, so, but I have, I, I, I said that you should pick like five of your favorites, uh, and yes, what of the ones that you picked? Did you try to pick different kinds to show sort of? Yeah, us? I did. I did, I, I did try to kind of mix it up a little bit because the thing that I really love is mecha anime, as you can probably tell from all the robot toys behind <laughs> me. And there's a, well, I'll, I'll actually send a video of what's in front of me because what's in front of me is actually crazier than what's behind okay. me. Okay. Um, so I'll send that afterwards because otherwise I have to disconnect everything, turn it round. Oh, no. It won't work. Yeah, yeah. It'll, That's, look, uh... it'll look hideous. Yeah. Um, but no, I try to mix it up. I try to kind of pick different things that I thought were you know, things that I've found incredibly interesting, influential. That so. were influential. So, th- so pick one. Well, influential to me, but also like influential to like anime, games, everything. Um, so for example, I mean, like you mentioned I'm a game designer. I worked on a game ages ago called Strike Suit Zero, and that was influenced by one of the anime that I uh, listed in that. So, um, Which one was that? Yeah, I mean, stuff like that. So I mean, from a personal point of view, this stuff has also influenced my work. Yeah, yeah. So. What um what's the oldest one on the list? The blue future aura? No, I think yeah, future uh, future boy Conan is probably probably the oldest, yeah. Okay, future boy Conan, what is it about? So future boy Conan is actually quite an interesting um anime because it was actually based on an American novel called The Incredible Tide by a very famous American author called Alexander Key. Now, Alexander Key was also, if you remember the amazing films in the 70s, you know, Race to Witch Mountain, do you remember yeah, those? Yeah, I do. With, with the alien kids and all that kind of thing. That was written by Alexander Key. Uh, so that was like part of his story. So in The Incredible Tide, it, it tells a story of Conan, but it, it's set after a massive, horrific apocalypse. Okay. And it's quite dark and nasty in the way that uh, the world has kind of ended up just completely devastated. Um, and Conan's, I think, quite a bit older. Whereas the anime adaptation, Conan's a lot younger. And whilst the um, they, they kind of go into more detail about how the world's been effectively wiped out, um, by these sort of magnetic weapons that have changed the, all the tectonic plates and everything's kind of sunk and there are very few land masses left. Um, oh. But it's, it's the whole story is about the... really about sort of how what's left of humanity is trying to resurrect some of the technology that destroyed the world, basically. Um, and Conan kind of gets, you know, wrapped up in it by accident. Um, and he kind of ends up becoming sort of very good friends with a little girl that they work with together. And the girl is actually, I think, either the daughter or the granddaughter of one of the major scientists that created the technology or worked with the technology that destroyed the world. But what's really amazing about Future Boy Conan was that it was one of the first anime that uh, everyone knows uh, ha- Hayao Miyazaki worked on. Oh. Um, so it was before... Even I've heard of Studio him. Ghibli. Yeah. Right. So even, even this... I actually think this is... If I'm, Brutally honest, this is kind of like the definitive, ultimate Miyazaki anime. Okay. Um, because it's kind of where where he really kind of got... I mean, he did anime before that, but this was like his. Um, what year is this? And did it start? 1979. 79. I think 1979. I mean, it's late 70s. For sure. Um, but what's amazing, it's a 26-episode series, and each episode's about half an hour long. But it actually watches like a 13-hour movie in terms of the pacing. It's really, really well constructed in terms of the story and the characters. And um, they really kind of picked a very simple animation uh, art style. But because they kind of kept it simple, they could actually do more with it. Um, which is kind of like the the calling card of a lot of later Miyazaki and Ghibli films. Is like the character design's quite, you know, plain. Yeah. But... 
but because of that, they can actually do more with it because it's not so complex to animate. So, um, but no, Future Boy Conan is amazing. It's unbelievably influential across all of anime. Um, so yeah, it's and that one and it's and it's only twenty six episodes, and thirty minutes. Only twenty. It's it's completely self contained. The only bad news is that it's not really available outside of Japan. Oh really? Which okay. Yes, so and I don't. Know, you would, I mean, you would have to it's, it's a very strange it thing. Yes, figure it out, I think I'd say. Okay. Um, but the thing is, is that was an NHK-funded anime. Um, so NHK is kind of like the public broadcast, like the BBC of Japan, okay. basically. And, and they very rarely do, like, anime series, and that was one of them. And it's amazingly good. And so, and so is it, and it's self-contained, and it's tw- uh, 26 episodes at 30 minutes each. And is it sort of, um, and, and it, it, it really is like the prequel to The Incredible Tide? No, 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 no. So it's based on The Incredible Tide. So, but it's kind of a much more, I wouldn't say light, well, it is more lighthearted. Okay. And obviously the, the, the protagonist, it's not as dark and depressing, but it's very much based on The Incredible Tide. So, so it is dark uh, the and depressing, but it isn't as dark and depressing as The Incredible Tide. Yes. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I mean, th- when you see what's happened to the world and things, that is depressing. But, you know, Conan's a very upbeat kid. He's unbelievably strong as well. So he just kind of puts up with it. So it- it's, as a series, it's very fun. Okay. Oh, that's but great. It, th- so, yeah. That's, but I, I'm I, trying I can, to think of like a, an age, like would 14, if you're, into, if you're into dark anime and you're 14, is it too much? It's not. No, I, I, to be honest, I think it, it's because it was shown on NHK. It was kind of meant for all ages. Okay. So, um, I mean, it deals with obviously a you know, post-apocalyptic world. So it's not super, super cheerful. But um, yeah, at the same time, it, it is a Miyazaki anime. So right. So it has you know, hope, which is what he always right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean. I mean, Naushka is a good example. Like the entire world's been like devastated by fungal and you know pollution. So that's a, a much nastier future. Right. But again, I, I wouldn't call that necessarily dark. It is there is hope. But I mean, yeah, and the future boy Conan's kind of it did kind of set that tone, and you do kind of feel that Naushka and then his later film, especially Laputa, comes from that. So that's awesome. That's um, that's so cool. Because I the one the one that I have famously told this story before is I sent um, the anime of the two little kids walking out of uh, Nagasaki. Um, oh, Grave of the Fireflies! Grave of the Fireflies! Because my nephew yeah that that uh, was mm. eight, and he yeah that's I talked to him after, and I didn't want it was the last time I ever gave anything to my nieces or nephews before watching or reading it. And because I talked to him and, and I said, did you like that? The uh, graveyard of the fireflies? Cause you like that, you know, that animation. He was like, yes, it was really sad. Aunt Jackie. And I was like, Oh shit. What? And then he told me what it was about. And I was like, I am so sorry. So now I, ch- it's not as, it's not as sad as grave of the fireflies. Grave of the fireflies is heartbreaking. Yes. It's heartbreaking. Um, it's literally, yeah. Yeah. So, but the kid I'm thinking of is 14 and he, that attack on Titan is one of his, you know, he likes that. He likes that. Okay. One piece. Oh no, he'll definitely like this. Okay. He so. definitely will. And it won't, it won't be, it's not great with the fireflies. He won't be emotionally and psychologically traumatized for decades. Oh, that's fine. He's probably Kill Martin's son. So he has already been. Okay. So. <laughs> bam. Well, no, you'll, you'll be fine. I'm zinger. Yeah. And she's not even here. Anyway. Uh, right. So, so is that, is that kind of the oldest one in your list that was sort of influential? I, it's so neat that me. I think so. Yeah. Worked on it. I mean that. Yeah. I mean, the sad thing, what I don't understand is there's a beautiful Blu-ray remaster that's available in japan i just don't understand why it hasn't been released outside of japan because it's such a great series and that's zone three uh, i think right or no zone a i mean i think because if i mean the, unfortunately the blu-rays aren't subtitled so it's it's pure japanese Ooh, it's... sometimes you get english subtitles on some of them but um these are full-on japanese best of but uh, they're yeah. zone a which is the same as the states i think okay but but not subtitled okay so no. make a note it, a pr- pretty hardcore if you want to watch anime that way. Yeah, so. yeah, that's. I mean, that makes sense. Our, um what's the next? What's the next oldest one? I, 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 I don't want to lead you into. Is it Macross? Macross? Uh, I'm trying to remember the list now. Oh, it's. Uh, I have Blue Hornet. Up. I have Aurora Battler. 
Yeah, I think it's probably all about the Dunbines, the next one. Okay. Uh, let me get it out. Yeah, or there we go. Dunbine. Yeah, or about the Dunbine. Yeah, that, that, yes. That is technical. I think that's 82, 83. Um, so, yeah, no, that is, okay, so that's another self-contained series. Um, it's sort of written and directed by a guy called Yoshiki Tamino. And Tamino is sort of, I wouldn't say the grandfather, but he's one of the main figures of uh, what would most commonly regarded be would be regarded as what would be real robot anime. Um, so in Japan, they have two kind of major definitions of mecha anime. Okay. Uh, there's super robot and real robot. Now, super robot are things like Mazinga, Geta Robo, and they're basically like incredibly powerful mecha that are effectively invulnerable they don't really obey any kind of real world rules okay they are not vulnerable you know basically the the story is normally that the protagonist screams a lot and the more he screams the more powerful he gets therefore he destroys things i'm being very kind of facetious and sort of right, right. it doesn't mean I'm, I'm don't very... love it it just no means... i love it i mean <laughs> i'm just trying to give like a very simple explanation yes. um so, I mean, I love, I mean, a good example of a super robot show I really love is Dan Cougar. And literally, the more angry the pilots get, the more powerful it gets. Okay. So, and that is actually like a, a specific thing that the, that's the written does. into it. And what's right, that right. one called? Uh, that's called um, Dan Cougar, or I think it was it's called Super Beast Machine Dan Cougar. Okay. Uh, which, is, which is available in the States, and the remastered Blu ray is available as well. That is an awesome series but that is a super robot show okay so what tamino did was sort of towards in the 70s he worked on things like was it uh so mobile suit gundam which is many regard as like not necessarily the start but the definitive real robot anime that kind of dictated what's kind of come since but uh, <sighs> To me, I did a lot of other really interesting series uh, after Gundam that were not related, that are very different. So Idion, which was a crazy super robot anime with a mecha that can cut planets in half um, and fire black holes and destroy arms of the Milky Way. Um, Who's making the robots? Or are they okay, okay, so, being? So in, in the case of Idion, okay. uh, the actual, they're made by these this ancient race. And effectively, Idion is kind of like a god. Okay. Um, so in the, but this is what's different. So when you go to something like Mobile Suit Gundam, you have two sides. It's a civil war in space. And you have, um, you know, the, the, the mecha are made in factories okay. right, on the opposing right. sides. Now, in Aura Battle of Dunbine, what was interesting about that is that is it starts a trend called, well, it's Isekai which is kind of an alternate reality. So uh, whenever you see uh, things like Narnia, where, um, you know, kids end up in a fantasy world, that is what in Japan would be called isekai. Okay. So, and it, or about the Dunbine's kind of like that, where a uh, Japanese motocross uh, motorbike rider is transported to a, a, a fantasy world called Byston Well uh, along the Aura Road. And he is kind of drafted into this war between rival medieval houses um which are using these um people from upper earth as it's called to have their auras pi you know power and pilot these mecha which are called aura battlers um and and they're kind of built from the the carcasses of dead giant insects and um what? dragons and, okay and so i think you so, had me at motorbike uh so yeah, okay so I'll, i've actually got one here so here we go so this is the titular aura battler dumbine there we go Woo. that's it and as you can see he's kind of based on a beetle with a cabotomachy yeah. head um and he's got wings and everything oh, he's flopping around but yeah so this is so this was a very different kind of real robot anime that um Tamino did, and it's kind of more of a fantasy based. But what's interesting is it it's because obviously the people from the upper earth, you know, come down there from like our real world. Okay. And so you actually have this kind of clash of cultures between this fantasy medieval world with sort of very strange technology and then us. And then on top of that, you have the fact that all of the pilots kind of are effectively using their soul to pilot these incredibly powerful 
mecha. Right. Um, and then are they and, grappling or are they flying and shooting at each other or both? Well, they're flying, shooting, and they've got swords and they hit each other. Okay. And, um, they also have huge aura battleships later on in the series, which are incredibly powerful. Um, and then there's a big twist, which I, I don't really want to spoil it. Don't, but, don't do I mean, it. It's, it's from... It's from the 80s. It's, well, it is hard. Lot, it's hard to justify. It's from like early 80s, so I can't... <laughs> but eventually what happens is is the war that kind of ends up consuming Byston Well with all these rival houses. Like the gods of Byston Well effectively push all of them back to the upper earth. Okay. So, and, so all of these amazingly crazy sort of mecha and ships end up fighting in amongst... You know New York and oh. you know London. Oh, they, um, they they bring the shit the aura ships back with them to our Earth. Well, no, well the gods kind of like chuck them out, right? Because they're destroying Byston Well, and Byston Wells they kind of infer that Byston Wells is kind of like heaven. It's where you go to when you die. Okay, which is why when they bring people from the upper Earth, mm -hmm. that they are you know more. Their soul is more powerful, effectively. Okay, because that's so, where it's that that's its home to some extent. Yes. Okay. So that I love, and the mecha design in that I think is groundbreaking um, by a guy called Kazutaka Miyatake, who was one of the four founding members of Studio Nui. Um, and it's like the, what I love about Dunbine is there hasn't really been anything like that before or since, and the story itself is again really cogent, and because it's all self-contained. Um, like how many episodes you know, of that? That's about fifty. Okay. So that's that's quite it's quite a long show. There are a few. Okay, so there are a few compilation OVAs where they kind of like try and put it, and you don't really need to watch those. There is a sequel uh, OVA called the Tales of Neo Bison Well, okay, which isn't that great, um, and that's like set seven hundred years later, I think, and. And then there's loads of other spin-offs. So you have things like Garzi's Wing and then uh, Wings of Reen. Um, but I like the Wings of Reen anime and the novels are kind of crazy. But the um, I would definitely recommend Aura Battle of Dunbine. That's available on Blu-ray. Um, with subtitles. You can buy that. If, if, with subtitles if, if, in the States. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the full remastered version. Uh, that's available in the US. I can thoroughly recommend that it's an amazing series that's that's so if, if, you, if you like if you like i suppose game of thrones with crazy um oh because it's sort of like uh, royal politics oh god yeah i okay. mean because you have all these rival kingdoms and then you've got these kind of humans stuck you know us stuck in between like a motorcycle rider going what the hell is this are we following um, the motorcycle rider guy yeah, Does he's he kind of, so that's Shozama. He's like the main protagonist. And obviously most of it's him. He's kind of very good at doing the exposition because he's like, what the hell's going on? So that's how you find out what's going on. And he's literally thrust into the middle of this, you know, huge world war. So it's it's really, really interesting. And it's, so th while I would say that Future Boy Conan is, aimed, I, like younger kids can definitely watch it. Something like Dunbine, that's really meant for teenagers. Okay. Um, okay. So you have something called uh, shonen, which is for young boys, um, and then you have seinen, which is for like teenagers. Okay, and that's kind of what this is for. So it's it's an older kind of. It's not. I wouldn't say, you know, violent or horrible, but it's it's a more complex kind of story and characterization. Right. Like the other the other things that I've seen. I mean, I th these are very basic. These are not you know, and they're not mechs at all, uh, to my knowledge, or because uh, it's. Like things like Dragon Ball Z and Naruto, yeah. um, mm -hmm. where they just seem to be entirely about friendship and family and hanging in the mm. sky, growling at each other. But, those yeah. those are uh, shonen. So that comes from uh, those both Dragon Ball and Naruto comes from a weekly manga uh, magazine called Shonen Jump. Okay. Um, and shonen basically means young boys. So it's basically comics for young boys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's where Dragon Ball and Naruto come from. Okay. So yeah, and so and so you said that that the art design on this Dunbine on the Dunbine show was sort of they haven't done it, they never did something like it before, and nothing since. Not really. I mean, what did I they mean, do? you have fantasy. Well, I mean, you saw that. I mean, it's so it's kind of the mixture of this kind of insect. Um, oh, aesthetic. Okay, so it's using more sort of like a, a, a an animal transformery kind of thing with. Mechs. Well, not they don't transform. Well, some do, but um, th they're not really what I would call a transformer. I mean, they kind of have different modes. One for like high speed flight, but um, the 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 thing with um, what is it? Dumbine. The no, the mecha are 
I mean, how to explain? So it's kind of like a streamlined version of, you know, if you found giant insects and you hacked off legs, you would kind of like shape it around. So it's kind of like a more sleeker version of... So they've appropriated the materials that they have access to. Right. Um, so, so, I mean, and the, yeah, it just doesn't look like anything else, really. Yeah, because really most impressive. of the mecha stuff are full-on robots. They look like robots. They look like oh, yeah. dudes instead of yeah. any kind of... I mean, they've got a head, arms, legs, yeah. body, torso. It's, um, are they... And, and who's making the... I mean, is is there one big... Is it like Micronauts or something? Like, who's making the toys for... Okay, so historically, I mean, they, uh, the there used to be a bunch of different Japanese companies like Popey, Clover, um, but now these days, like the Dumbine I showed you, that's made by Bandai. Okay. And what's crazy about that toy, that is of the original Dumbine from the original anime, and those things are selling like gangbusters. So they're still releasing toys now. Yeah decades later that is still unbelievably popular i mean half of the stuff in front of me is from dumbine so and, and um, purchased in I've, got, last... I've actually got a giant dumbine over there and, and and is it been stuff that you've bought in the last couple of years or did you buy it back in the 80s when you were oh no 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 filed? this is new stuff this is all new um <laughs> okay. so so i mean the old stuff i mean the proportions are kind of like they're really square and blocky mm -hmm. whereas the newer ones because of you know improved manufacturing they can actually get it really close to the design yeah and, and normally they actually have the original um mecha designer come in and kind of supervise um so what's interesting is um so miyatake was kind of the guy who started it off and then it kind of shifted into another guy called izabuchi utaka izabuchi and his designs are kind of even more organic and sort of outlandish and amazing and he's been like used to kind of come in and uh, work on a bunch of new toys as well so let's say I'll, I'll bring out this one so this this is kind of quite a complex one so this is more I said, where we go. Eee. So this is what's called the bell vine. Okay. And this was never animated. This was in an art book, which they did for the OVA. Okay. Um, OVA stand. And for... so the, the, the fact that they have, you know, toys of this, I mean, so, yeah, it looks quite different to the, to the dumbine. So yeah. the dumb, so I'll get the dumbine. So the dumbine is kind of simpler and streamlined and, and looks go. very um, sort of practical uh this the one on the right does not look practical what is the no no this this is actually i mean what happens like later on is that the mecha become less and less refined and much more powerful so um okay. this is kind of like literally much more organic than the dumbine so, and, and just to kind of yeah sorry and just to kind of make things a bit complicated, so just give me a second, I'll just put this yeah. this down. So in the Dumbine, uh, so the Tales of Neo Bison Well OVA, they have, like, the two main mecha are kind of like allegories for the mecha that were in the uh, original series. There we go. I'm just destroying half my collection. Anyway, um, so this is what is called the Serbine. Right, set. Okay. And the Serbine, let's move back here. Serbine is kind of like an updated version of... The Dumbine. Oh, okay. So it's but updated in a kind of a more organic, kind of savage way. Yeah. So anyway. it's certainly... But I have all. I mean, I just have all these toys. It's you ridiculous. have several toys. So is what I'm. What yes. I'm getting. My, my apologies. Oh, no. My apologies. But Too many all, toys. But all of the toys that you just showed me are from the Dunbine series. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, yes, they are. Yeah. They are. And they're all they're all new. I mean, they're, they've all been made released by Bandai in the like in the last five ten years. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that sounds like an amazing show that I would also like to try to watch. Uh, what's, yes. What's next? Would it be Laputa or Macross or Blue Cornet? Oh, uh, no. So let me have a look. I think that's a good question. Probably Macross, do you remember love? So that was kind of like my on. Yeah. Macross, do you remember love? I think because that's 84. Oh, OK. Um, 84. Um, and um, Macro Stream Remember Love is what is called a Geki Joban, which is like a, a filmic remix of the original uh, Super, Defension, Super Dimension Fortress Macross, which was one of the three series that was appropriated into Robotech. So Robotech was made from three mecha anime, uh, Macross, Southern Cross, and Mospeda. And um, the first part was Macross. Okay. And the movie, uh, Macross to Remember Love, is kind of like a retelling of the story of the series. In the timeline of Macross, it's a bit messed up because the way they 
justify the movie is they say it's a documentary that was made in 2031 about the events of what happened in the series. Okay. So, because there, there are events... So, in, in the series, you have... So, the whole thing with Macross is that a giant ship lands on Earth. We don't know where it's come from, but we do know that all the stuff inside is scaled to giants. Okay. So, we have to figure out how are we going to fight these giants. So, this is where the idea for the mecha comes from. And initially, the mecha they come up with are called destroids, which are quite simple. They just walk around and shoot things. And then they realise, well, we're going to need something more variable that can deal with different threats and they end up effectively creating what is the first variable fighter which are called valkyries in the original series right. in robotech i think they're called veritex okay um and they have three modes which is fighter a sort of gear walk which is like a legs down like a hawk and then batroid which is the mecha mode okay and they what eventually happens is like 10 years later the giant aliens turn up and then lay waste to the earth and then the the ship which is now being called the macross escapes and then there's this kind of running fight over the course of the solar system to get back to earth because they they mess up because they have this hyperspace fold system and they get it wrong and they end up hyperspacing to pluto okay um but in the movie you kind of cut in halfway through where they're already like at saturn on their way back but what's different in the movie is so the the aliens in the uh, series are called Zentradi and the men are, are the Zentradi and the women are the Meltrandi and they kind of have two separate factions but they work together. Okay. In the movie they are the main antagonists oh. and the story change in the movie is that the ship that crash landed on Earth was actually a Meltrandi ship and that's why the Zentradi attack because they think it's actually the women. So the whole story is actually men versus women, giant women, and humans are kind of caught in the middle. Oh, okay. So, and what saves it at the end is because both these like men, Mentradi and Zentradi cultures, they're literally clones bred for war. They don't have any culture. So when they're exposed to kind of any kind of culture for the first time, they have culture shock and it basically, they have this huge war and music effectively stops the war because they've never heard music before. Um, so, and in amongst all this, you have all these transforming fighters and all that kind of stuff. Wow. Uh, okay. In the midst of that uh, long sentence, there was something you said. He was in mech mode. Uh, what is mech mode? Let's, let's okay, so, yeah. so the whole thing is because they're giants, yeah. um, you know, that, that's the whole point is that you have this effectively what looks like an F-14 Tomcat transform from a plane to a, a mecha. Okay. Um, and the movie version's a bit different because they actually have like more armor and stuff on. So here we go. Just grab this dude. So this is the VF1S Strike Valkyrie. Okay. Here we go. In Batroid mode. Okay. There we go. And Batroid mode is just battering him, battering ram. No, no, Batroid as in the robot mode. They call it Batroid. So okay. it's, this is the mecha mode. Okay. Um, and the Strike Valkyrie is a bit different because it has this cannon on it here. Which uh, folds forward nice. and shoot things, but yeah. So this is the that's from Macross. Do you remember Love? Yep. And so Macross, do you remember Love? I love it because like the animation in it is bonkers because they kind of went to town, um, and it has some of the some of the best animation from the eighties in that movie. I also love the music because it's wonderfully cheesy. Okay. Um, but it's I think. It, as a story on its own, it's a bit of a strange one because you really do really need to know like the original series beforehand to kind of get what's going on. Mm. But I, I really love it. That, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't think is available in the US because of the complex rights between Robotech and Macross and all this kind of nonsense, which is a shame. Right. But it's a wonderful series and they have done a Blu-ray remaster. So that's available in Japan, but again, doesn't have English subtitles. And so. there might be a way to see some of this animation at the very least yes. on YouTube yes. from clips. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean... I mean, yes, I'm not going to say how. <laughs> so, right, right. I mean, it's not trouble. as good, obviously, and it's not remastered and all all as gorgeous. But if you want to get an idea of what Macross yeah. uh, Do You Remember Love looks like, you can go to YouTube and Google it. Oh, no, no. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah no, you can. Yeah, I mean, they've got like, um, I mean, it's slightly spoilery because it's like the, the major song at the end. Yeah. Which you know that kind of you stops the war ah, or, okay you know finishes the war i mean that that is on the on youtube and that's kind of classic but i mean that song itself is um which is called do you remember love um is you know a classic in japan oh, so. okay and how's the heart on it 
I mean, is it, is it just got, is it, I mean, that's what I, that's what I like about a lot of different anime and manga is that it usually has just sort of, even if the message is, is, is very basic good versus evil, there's usually some depth to it. Where... Oh, no, no, there is, there is. I mean, in this instance, so the, the story is quite, so obviously you've got this huge backdrop of like an interstellar war effectively. Yeah. But the actual story is kind of based around three people, which is a love triangle, oh, okay. which is the pilot, uh, Hikaru, um, and one of the commanding officers, Misa, and then the singer, the lady who does all the singing, Mingmei. And initially the story is that Hikaru and Minmei become sort of, sort of like lovers, but over time... Um, he kind of realizes, you know, that he he actually has more. He loves Misa, so there's this huge, because effectively, like the entirety of humanity, like needs Minmay to sing, yeah. but obviously she's broken hearted. Yeah. So it's like, oh, no, don't just sing because we're going to die horribly. Look what it did so, for Adele. Um, Anyway, yeah. every time Adele breaks um, up, she's got a number one album. It's it's uh, just yeah, right, channel right. that channel. So, channel it so she does she channels oh, good. it um and um but that's kind of the story but yeah i mean the whole purpose of i mean the story of macross i mean the original one is is really interesting in the way that um you know a culture of war is is just empty there's nothing there so the, the purpose of you know getting exposed to culture is something that is explored explored quite a lot in the series in a really interesting way so there is a lot more going on i mean like you're saying it's it's not like a, just a simple you know, gun shoot things. Right. Um, you know, there is actually depth to it, yeah. That's awesome. I mean, Macross is kind of more on the, you know, I would say the the spectacle, definitely. Right. But um, it's it, there's still more to it. it it's not just a, a simple sort of Right, there's a lot of Big Bang right. to your buck. There's, oh. There is a lot of Big Bang, a <laughs> um, lot of big guns. Yeah, um, which is And I think fun. also the animation for... Yeah, the animation for it's amazing in the sense that like the choreography of because up until Macross we you didn't really have this kind of level of mecha choreography flying through the air dodging missiles and all this kind of stuff um and uh Macross was kind of famous for um this really kind of amazing animation flourish where you have like hundreds of missiles kind of like doing crossing all over each other and the guy that came up with it was a very talented or is a very talented animator called uh, Ichiro Itano and the 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 missile kind of thing is called the Itano Circus. Oh. So whenever you see that kind of really huge like missile barrage, normally it's either he like Itano has done that or someone is referencing Itano. Oh, okay. And that kind of really started in Macross. I mean it's it, he used it in other things before, but Macross was where it really he went to town. Right. It's it's so, always hard to say this is where something started when it comes yeah. to something as big as anime or, or manga or something. Right, right. Because there's very easily someone out there going, you know. Um, no, 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 absolutely. Yeah. I mean, in, in this case, what I mean is that Itano actually worked on Gundam and Idiom before this. And there are elements of like that kind of animation in those series. Yeah. But Matt Cross is kind of where he went. That's when it kind of became the circus. I right. Suppose, and and, and he goes to town. And who doesn't want... Yes. He goes to town. <laughs> what? Okay. So how about a little bit of Laputa or Blue Cormit? Okay. So the next one. Yeah. Um, so it, it, this is 1985. Would be Blue Comet uh, SPT Lasner, which I absolutely have to talk about numerous times. Because, yeah. So, l l okay. Just... Uh, so Lazen is a really, really, really interesting series that I didn't realize was quite so important and influential until I got to Japan. Okay. Um, How long have you I lived loved in it Japan? Before. About six years. Okay. Um, and I'd seen Lazen before. Um, I thought it was incredibly good. Um, so, I mean, just to give a bit of context. So the guy that wrote and directed Lazen is a guy called Rosuke Takahashi. And... Whilst Tomino was kind of the guy who started real robot, you know, mecha anime with things like Gundam and Elgheim and all this kind of stuff, it was Takahashi that made it very, very, I wouldn't say, not realistic, but believable. So he started off with an anime in like early 80s called Fang of the Sun Dugram, which is all about, um, you know, effectively guerrilla fighters trying to fight for independence from a... Uh, Earth Federation, effectively. Okay. And this is on an alien planet, but the mecha they use are all very believable. The 
the the mecha the Doug Ram doesn't really have a head in a normal way. It looks like an Apache helicopter cockpit. Um, oh. And what's interesting about Doug Ram is a lot of those designs were taken and used for things like BattleTech and Mech Warrior. So what a lot of people perceive to be like realistic mecha is actually stuff that Roska Takahashi's anime introduced to the world. And then after um, Doug Ram, he made another series called Votoms, which is even more brutal and dark and uh, it's set during a hundred year galactic war and everyone dies horribly. And the mecha, again, they're based on sort of American Jeeps. So they look very, very rugged and they're mass produced. So they're not like prototypes or special. They're just like, you know, stuff that's there. Right. Um, and then after that, he did, I think he did, was it, which one was it? I think it was Galleon. And Galleon was kind of more of similar to Dumbine, but with a really interesting story twist. So it was a fantasy type mecha anime, what you thought was medieval, but is actually set distant far off in the future. Okay. Um, but because obviously they don't know the difference, that's kind of what happened. And then we come to Leisner. And Leisner was kind of the last of the big four that he did. And Leisner was set in the then future, um, like early 2000s, where the Cold War was still raging. So Russia and America are still on the brink of nuclear war. And they've colonized uh, Earth and Mars. And the story starts with a bunch of kids being sent to Mars as kind of, well, I don't know, peace envoys to kind of help the peace process. Okay. And then these mysterious aliens invade and destroy um, both the American and Russian bases. But one mecha kind of tries to stop it and saves everyone. And that is the Lazner, which is piloted by A.G. Now, A.G. is half alien, half human. And oh. he wants to stop the war between these aliens and the humans. So Leisner is all about this really horrible conflict where so children are caught in the middle. For the first like half of the series, um, it's like a running like escape to get back to Earth. Okay. And and the aliens are on their tail the whole way. What's amazing about like the first half of Leisner is that like Future Boy Conan, it's really like well crafted story wise so there's like no fat it's just really lean and the pacing is fantastic the animation is also crazily good for a tv series and because h how many um, episodes are in this one the latest one. okay so this is where it gets complicated okay so um i'll get to that in a minute yeah fair enough <laughs> so the the, the the guy that um so laser is really interesting because one of the top anime mini studios called anime r was called in to kind of do the animation and the main sort of guy of anime are is a very famous animator called Moriyasu Taniguchi who did all the character designs for Leisner as well but he really went crazy on animating uh, Leisner now the reason why I bring this up is that every kind of summer in Japan Sunrise which is the studio that owns all these like mecha anime does like a, a cinematic you know um, like road show where they just show classic anime on the big screen and whenever Leisner is shown it's you go to the cinema and you sit down and you're literally looking at a who's who of Japanese animation in terms of directors, animators, character designers, background artists, like all the main people are there because they grew up watching this and that became like, I want to animate like that. Ah. And, and what's interesting is like, but on the outside, when you walk, before you walk into the, the cinema, they normally have like a big, a sheet of paper where people like write things on it like I really like Leisner <laughs> or I really like Gundam but on the Leisner showings because you have all these amazing artists like people spend ages drawing these amazing sort of pieces of art for different like characters mecha all this kind of stuff just like tri like a and tribute wall kind of yeah okay yeah. every summer and, and that yeah literally every summer but not every summer do they show Leisner but whenever they do it's it really is strange like, because I've been to other series like Escaflone or Crusher Joe or Gundam. And, you know, I see all this stuff and you, you, you see some people that you know that are, you know, from anime or games. But from Lazener, it's just chock full of industry just people. Just like sort of um, inside famous industry people. Okay. Right, right. And everyone is hugely, like, sort of inspired by Lazener, which is kind of where I want to get to the next thing is that literally so many anime because I didn't realize this till I got here was how many anime are influenced by Lazener 
um, how many games are influenced by Lesnar. Um, it's ridiculous. And the reason why we're going to talk about the how many episodes is the first, it's about 34, 36 episodes, but it was originally meant to be like a 50 episode series, but it was cut short in the second season. And there are various rumours about this. So when I spoke with Takahashi, he explained that um, he said the ratings weren't very good and that's why they cancelled it. Um, however, there are other things where one of the um, sponsors was a company called Sanyo that made kerosene heaters. Okay. And I think during 85 or 86, um, basically their kerosene heaters killed people. So they had a huge recall. Oh. And because of that, their sponsorship was probably pulled from a bunch of different places, right. probably including Lesnar. Right. Um, I mean, there are you know newspaper clippings that sure. kind of talk about Sanyo and this kind of stuff. So it, it's one of those things happened, or both, I don't know. But I, I'm not so sure about the ratings because they did a recent Blu-ray remaster which sold incredibly well. They're still making toys. So here we go. This has literally just been released recently. So this is the Lesnar. Oh, wow. Uh, actually, the new Lesnar, which has got the... Um, you know, chest uh, boosters and all this kind of stuff. What's interesting is the cockpit's in the head. Yeah. So if I open, if I open the cockpit, here we go. Uh, come on, you silly little thing. So when you get, when, when you get one of these mech toys, do you have to put it together or does it come on a card? No, no, no. These are all toys. Yeah. So um, you don't build them. No, you don't uh, have to build so them. So I'm yeah. actually a toy collector. I'm not a kit guy, really. Right. Um, and so there are different types of toys, and one of the toys I really like is called Chogokin, which is basically die-cast mecha toys. So a lot of the inside, like, endoskeleton is metal. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And those are much more durable. And normally those kind of ones are used for when you want to do something transformational. So, um, you know, to Dan Cougar, I mean, I think there's a big Dan Cougar box you know, there. Okay. Um, and that one, that is just all, you know, inside is die-cast, because it's, it combines from, like, uh, four different vehicles... And the four vehicles, you know, transform between a mecha mode, a beast mode, and then the combined mode, where, like, two of them end up as feet, one of them ends up as the head. Okay. So, um, so I mean, those ha use a lot of die cast. So, I'm really much a toy guy. So, toy guy, but, but and, and these mechas, they don't seem to be super, I mean, they... Uh, are they? Do they have a lot of joints? Or they... oh no, no, this this is articulated like a crazy thing. Let articulated. Me take it That's the word I was looking for. It has articulation. So I mean, yeah. So yeah. So I mean, these legs all all, all moves. Right. All the know, move. All, all the legs move. Yeah. And, uh, and the, do the all hands the legs twist. Feet. Yeah. No, the hands twist everything. <laughs> yeah. Some of them even have articulated fingers, which is kind of crazy. When yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. Um, but no, I mean, all of this is, they're all poseable. Yeah, that's so, so cool. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, that's what you... I mean, that's why I buy toys, is that you can do that. So, otherwise, if it's just like a fixed pose, it's just like, that's... That's a statue. Why? You've you've bought a statue. Yeah. And if you like no, so statues, when... that's a different dorkdom. This is not the right. dorkdom of Ali Barter, by the way. No. I'm talking to Ali Barter. Let's get a pipe in, uh, just to tell you who I'm talking to. It's Ali Barter, you guys. And if you want, you can go and um, and, and follow him on Twitter and watch his YouTube channel, which is uh, Cacophonous, which is C-A-C-O-P-H-A-N-U-S. And that's and then he has written, like, you sent me a list of, of several reviews and, and, like, a lot of stuff about toys and about um, uh, that, that you reviewed on Forbes and Hobby Link. And, yeah. w and do you review on the Mecca website? Is that... Oh, no, I mean, that's kind of... So when it comes to toys and hobby link, I mean, that's pretty much what I do. I mean, my specialist is that specialist subject is mecha, right? yeah. mecha toys. And to be honest, it's, it's a huge part of pop culture here. I mean, like I said, most of these, well, all of these toys, this is brand new. I mean, they just released this and this is from an anime series that was from, I don't know, 84. from 85, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, 85. So, I mean, they're still making this stuff. I mean, oh, so this is another one. So I also got this as well, which is the Zakal, which is the evil bad guy. Basically, anything in anime that is that's so gold, gold. You know, look how tinsel that yeah. is. That's outstanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, anything gold, you know, you're in trouble. So yeah. anyway, oh, that's a, that's a bad guy, the gold. Yeah, and uh, so so that's the Zakal. So I mean, that's just been released. That's why I love that that the Dork Forest is now on Zoom, and and I'm and I have videos for these things because then people can actually see. I did a 3D printer one, and uh, we got to watch <laughs> some 3D printing. Oh, that's yeah. amazing! Yeah, oh, that's awesome. That was that was a really fun episode, and um, but this, that's awesome. So Blue Comic, com Comet, a Blue Comet, SPT Laser, and so yeah. the story is essentially. What's the story, then? 
So basically you have these two... So the, what the aliens are trying to do is they're trying to make Russia and America fight each other to destroy each other so they can conquer the Earth. And AG is trying to protect humans and, and explain, no, 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 it's not the Russians, it's not the Americans, it's these aliens called the Grodosians. Well, they're they're going to destroy us. It's so interesting. So, they could have just left us alone and it would have happened right. without any interference at all. And it sounds mm. like uh, the aliens are Armenian. Are they Armenian? What are their names? No, they're but the, so so. This is where it gets really interesting. Is the aliens are, are okay? They're they're human. Yeah. But you find out what's actually going on between the relationship between humanity and these aliens uh, later on in the series, and that's really interesting. But this is the problem because it was kind of cut short. A lot of the story arc in the second season was kind of not completely finished right and they released like a, a separate ova to kind of finish off the story which did it okay but what was sad about Lesnar was that the pacing of the first season was so good and then the second season they weren't able to do it the way they wanted so it kind of doesn't work as well so it's a bit like firefly okay. like everyone loves firefly and it kind of has all of these budgetary problems and the story's so good and then it just stops and that's kind of what Lesnar was okay but and Lesnar it you know, I mean, Firefly was like influential on things like Battlestar Galactica in terms of how they did the special effects, and like a lot of the story stuff in Firefly has been used elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, though, Firefly did actually. I'm pretty sure Firefly has a lot of anime influence on it as well. So things like Cowboy Bebop and Outlaw Star are the two main ones that really come across. Like basically a bunch of people on a spaceship together. Right. Going through. Right. Yeah, right. Essentially so, if Han Solo had a had a series. And, right. Um, Which is kind of more like what Bebop was yeah. and Outlaw Star. So I don't, and, and I there's saw also a Cowboy girl, Bebop or I saw one of the out one of the one of the movies, Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, the movie's the movie's very good, but I mean the series is. If you watch Bebop and I mean Cowboy Bebop's a fantastic series, you should absolutely watch. Okay. Um, and and Outlaw Star's also great as well. I mean the whole thing with River in Firefly does come across like a lot of the stuff that they did in Outlaw Star a bit. Okay. So Outlaw I'm, Star. I'm, I'm I'm kind of curious to see if Joss Whedon will ever admit to saying I like anime. <laughs> right. So that would be fun. Well, I will say so the the. The two manga that my nephews really, one of my nephews is really into manga. And so he, and in an effort to get Laurie Kilmartin's son some art and some manga that he might like, I asked for my 26 year old nephew to recommend some manga that he thought would be okay for an 11 year old who's now 14. And so he turned me on to this thing called Spirit Circle. Uh, which is um, a manga set in a middle school about, and it's about reincarnation uh. and um, and it's, it's wonderful and it's beautifully drawn and it's really cool. But the one I'm reading right now is actually, I believe it was turned into anime, which was golden Kamoi. Kam oh, golden Kamoi. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really, that's on anime. That's on TV now in Japan. Right. Got the anime adaptation. The, the manga is amazing and it's gorgeous. Yes, it is. So, yeah. uh, yeah. that's what, so that's the, that's what I'm reading. Uh, <laughs> that has anything even adjacent to this, but, um, what about, uh, do you, do you want to talk more about blue comet? Well, no, well, just with Lazen, just to finish off, I mean, unfortunately, it's not really readily available outside of Japan. Hopefully one day it will be. The reason why I say this is because, um, you know, they recently did a whole re-release of Votoms on Blu-ray. Um, so I'm pretty sure at some point we're going to get hopefully a release of Lazenor. There's already an amazing remaster in Japan, but again, no English subtitles, but it's an amazing series. Um that's... And I really, really hope it kind of gets... I mean, games like Virtual On, Armored Core, Zone of the Enders wouldn't exist without Lesnar, Bangayo. Okay. And then anime... I mean, so that's another thing that's quite interesting is that um, like anime... Like, a lot of Lesnar is in lots of other anime. So Gundam 0083, they have a character called Kelly Lesnar as a reference oh, to okay. it. okay. Um, and some of the mecha designs are kind of influenced by it. The way the mecha move is also influenced by it. It's normally about how the mecha move... Because the way that Lazen does things, it's very acrobatic. Oh. And because they have all these verniers all over the... You know, thrusters all over the mecha. Okay. They can kind of flip and do all this amazing uh, movement. That's so, cool. But yeah, yeah, no. Lazener, absolutely recommend it. Watch it. It's fantastic. Okay. And uh, and we're, we have uh, essentially 10 more minutes uh, to talk about okay. Buddha. So Laputa, that is Laputa. prob... So that is technically the first Studio Ghibli anime movie. So this is another Miyazaki movie. Um, but th I, this was probably one of the first anime I saw as a kid um, because it was shown in the UK um, on Channel 4, I think. Anyway, but it was dubbed into English and it was... 
I, I think I only saw like the last 20 minutes of it or something, but it kind of stuck with me as a kid. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I have to find out what this is. And I eventually found out um, what it was. And it is by far and away. So whilst Future Boy Conan is by far and away my favorite Miyazaki anime overall, okay. my favorite Miyazaki movie is Laputa, which unfortunately you cannot really say in America or anywhere else. With yeah, Spanish I've never, people because I've they never get very heard upset. of it. I thought I owned... I thought I had all of his stuff. Just because. So in America, it's released as Castle in the Sky. So you probably have that. Oh, so Laputa is Castle in the Sky. That's the same. That's the yes. same one. So they can't call it Laputa in America, but they do because it's a very rude word in Spanish, and it comes from uh, Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels, and that was intentional in his. Oh. Um, well, yeah, because that's where the story, kind of the origin of the story comes from. So Laputa is the flying island in Gulliver's Travels. Yeah. Um, and But in the movie, it's a different kind of story. And it's so Miyazaki actually went to Wales um, and based a lot of the initial mining culture and, uh, you know, landscape on Wales. So when the movie starts, it feels for me very homely because I'm from England. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I, I know where this is. Oh. And then... Um, but the animation's amazing. The story, again, it's, I think, one of the best stories in anime in terms of just, again, pacing characters, how it's told, the reveals, everything about it is magical, really. I have and to the watch, animation is fantastic. I have to watch that really one do. again. But watch, what, what, what I will say is, I, while I watch the dub, definitely watch the Japanese version with English subtitles. Oh, okay, because um, I have the English dubbed version on Blu-ray. Cap yeah, but you you should be able to switch between the oh it, the it, audio yeah tracks. it might be an extra yeah because yeah normally normally on those you will always have the original Japanese audio but yeah so in in the states and elsewhere outside of Japan it's called Castle in the Sky okay um but that is my favorite and again so the Future Boy Conan you have this like young boy young girl pair right. that kind of drive the story forward and that kind of feels like the prototype for what you see in Laputa which is between Pazu and Sheeta. And they, they kind of work together to basically find this castle in the sky. Um, but the thing is, is the technology that put it up there was not all good and nice. So you find out why no one can find it anymore. Why, you know, the world's been devastated and all this kind of stuff. This has, been addressed, you have to see it. this has been addressed in Dungeons and Dragons when you have enslaved an air elemental to fly your ship. This isn't okay. Yeah. It's not okay. No. It's not the air elemental no, doesn't it, just want to do that. It wants to get no. off and be in the wind. Uh, so yes. weirdly enough, something like that. Yeah, something like that. So Castle in the Sky is the one and try to see it with the, and, and, and check my DVD to see the Japanese version with subtitles. Yeah. Uh, with the that, I mean, for that one, I would recommend because the voice acting on the original Japanese version is fantastic. Okay. So. And because um, my favorite Miyazaki, weirdly enough, because I don't enjoy bugs, is that Nausicaa one, Valley of the Yes. Yeah. So beautiful. You should, you need to read the manga for that then. Okay. Because the manga for that is 10 times better than the movie. Oh, I, I bet. Because I, you really can go into... Sort Ooh, of the, so the movie the, kind the of thought. touches on a very small part of the story. Yeah. But the manga is amazing. Um, absolutely. I mean, if you haven't read that manga, that is like the go-to must-read okay. Nausicaa the manga. Okay. Just, just. I mean, you can you can get the box set for it like for nothing now. Right, and it's um, online. It's not like, because yeah. that's what er Eric, my nephew, is constantly like, I don't know why you want to buy these books. There's a hundred of them. Uh, or you could just go to this website. And I'm like, because uh, yeah. I'm a hundred and I like to, have, <laughs> I like to hold. Well, I like to hold things. Yeah, I like to hold a book in my hand. <laughs> so, What's a book? Well, yeah. Uh, I know. I have that with kids. Yeah. 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 Um, but the, um, no, no, but the manga for that is fantastic. Okay. So, but the, yeah, the Nausicaa is a great movie as well, but. I much prefer Laputa. I mean, of all the movies that he's done, so things like Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, um, Ponyo you know, loves uh, also. Ponyo. Ponyo loves ham. Yeah, Ponyo is lovely though. It's, it's uh, everyone's every, beautiful. It's yeah. just sweet, is what it is. Yes. Yeah. Even though um, at one point you're like, everyone. oh, Totoro. Yeah, uh, Ponyo when when she leaves her five year old. Uh, to go help the elder care place. I'm just like, what yeah. What just happened? Did you just leave your kid alone in a house with a fish? Okay. So this this is actually quite a normal thing in Japan. The, there are keys called latchkey kids yeah. that actually 
you know both parents are working and they have a lap, you know key on their like thing so they get they walk around tokyo like very very young age and they're so, still doing it they're still doing it because yeah. they did the latchkey in america and then they they stopped doing it about 10 years ago and uh yes. with the introduction of helicopter children uh parents helicopter parents where uh they won't oh stop scheduling things for their children and their children never do get to be alone um so yeah. it's a uh, Helicopter parents. I've heard that term. It's because they're hovering overhead yeah, yeah. all the time. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, this, I mean, literally, we are at an hour. Uh, you've done vital work here. Uh, I've got, <laughs> I've, I've, so, I've learned quite a great deal about the mech toys, and we've got at least five, and it, they'll be hard to find because uh, hard to find in the US. I mean, some of them, I mean, about half of them are available in the US. Yeah. But, um, and that's a yeah. good start because they're all seasons long. You're fine. There'll be plenty of... Yeah, no, you've got a lot to get through there. Yes, so. it'll be... And then we'll have you back and there'll be five more. And uh, <laughs> it'll, and hopefully not 10 years from now. So... Uh, no. Yes. No, hopefully not 10 years from now. Ollie Barter, so. thank you so much for doing The Dork Forest. Everybody, go to Cacophonous, uh, at Cacophonous on Twitter. And the YouTube is obviously youtube.com slash Cacophonous. It'll be in the notes. Uh, a lot of the links to the, to the different articles where you can find uh, his writings uh available uh super fun talking to you for an hour thank you so much for being on the show no problem all right and i'm gonna say this like i say it every week uh rangers take care of each other out there my hat my hat my hat they're dancing around my hat <laughs> my hat my hat my hat well what do you think of that if it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my God. We, why don't we just call that as the end of the show?